And hi everyone, I hope you're all well. This is season two, episode number two of my guest list pod. If this is your first time to the show, then welcome. Thanks for giving me a chance. If you're a returning listener, then welcome back and thanks for listening in from wherever and whenever you're doing so. As usual, I'm your host, Darren, and this is the show where the guests on my list get to have some fun with their favorite list countdowns, and we get to know them and their work a little better. Remember, if you would like to get in contact with me, you can do so at my guest list pod pretty much everywhere you look. This week, we are chatting to a couple of cracking gents from the UK who host a little show called We Have Been Watching, and the show is pretty much as advertised or what you would expect from the show title. The boys discuss all manner of things, TV and film, that have been on their most recent playlists. Martin, Robin, and I had a great time geeking out over their countdown, and they were a fantastic duo to chat to. So much so, it ended up being a bit of a longer episode, and as such, I've decided to split the show into two parts that I will release on consecutive weeks. So, sorry that means no review show next week. However, this week, sit back, relax... Settle in and get your nerd on as the boys give you an insight into what they would rather have on a desert island other than the obligatory volleyball. Wilson! Wilson! Joining me today are the hosts of a very entertaining and insightful podcast dedicated to the cinema and TV mediums. Robin and Martin discuss, as you would expect given the name of their show, things they have been watching recently, but also dissect movies from their past and, in the case of Zack Snyder's soon-to-be-released director's cut, their future. They don't always agree with each other's opinions on a given movie or TV series, and that's what makes them so interesting. They have a wealth of cinema knowledge and have just released their 10th episode. Their laid-back style, but clever analysis, have quickly made them a popular show in this genre. Robin and Martin, cup of tea in hand, I'm sure. Thanks for joining me today, and welcome to my guest list pod. Thank you for that lovely intro. Not a problem. That's fantastic. I think you've given us far too complimentary an intro there. (laughs) (laughs) I don't say that at all. Yeah, I wasn't sure that was us then. I was thinking, we've crashed the wrong call. (laughs) No, uh, (laughs) no, you guys, uh, as I said uh, before we started, uh, I I found your podcast and I actually liked your take on uh, a lot of the movies and TV uh, series that you mentioned and uh, I think the first one I listened to was the one on Tenet and uh, yes yeah that's a, a talking point between my son and myself who uh, who we, we loved that movie and then it was interesting to hear you guys talk about it as well so uh, I, I, then from there I just went on and uh, I think of from about six episodes in so which is yeah pretty very cool. kind thank you yeah not a problem not a problem what what it's quite funny actually because i was having this conversation with somebody before and they were saying one thing that worked for them was that we're not expert film reviewers we're not uh you know cinematographers we've got no experience in the genre we're just two guys talking about it as as you would at work as you would in the pub as you would with just two two friends yeah yeah and we rather than just rather than just more than like did you say that yeah it was quite good that's it I think we, we do like sort of picking things apart a little bit when we've got together before podcasting. We just pick things apart, don't we? So we just we just carried on with that kind of idea, haven't we? Really, of what do you think of this bit? Well, yeah, but what about this bit? What about that bit? Mm. It's it's yeah. so yeah, it's very relatable. I I think that most people, especially if you're into movies or TV or anything like that, they have that discussion at work. You know, did you yep. see the latest episode of this, that, and the other? And you you pull it apart at work and. Uh, Solve all, solve all the world's uh, ills and things like that at your <laughs> yeah, at your desk. Absolutely. <laughs> so uh, no, no, it, that's what, I think that informal nature is uh, what's really appealing and uh, what people can relate to. So which is which is great. Well, it's actually uh, there's actually a what, not an ulterior. What's what's the word I'm looking for, Robin? The funny thing is, this podcast actually is a kind of extension of what we're actually like so i don't think i don't think anyone knows this but me and robin are actually related so oh. robin is married to my cousin oh okay and we, we've been doing this for 
Robin, 20 years or so? Uh, yeah, getting on? together and, and talking. Yeah, it yeah. usually happens. We get we get together as, and obviously with our children, we've had children, obviously not, not together, but we've had children <laughs> that, yeah, are, are, ages, yeah. and, that have grown up. But whenever we get together, it seems to, <laughs> it does seem to be me and you game and play, play computer games, talk about computer games, and we just talk about film and TV stuff, don't we? Yeah, it was, and, I mean, I remember, I remember way back when the internet was fairly new. You were like, oh, my God, have you seen that? It's like cops, isn't it, but with, with, clone tra- uh, with, with Star Wars troopers. Do you remember <laughs> that? You'd say, oh, have you seen these trailers? Have you seen those trailers? And we'd just talk about comic things. And then we, you know, as life sort of carried on, we carried on doing the same. But, Robin, we we hadn't seen each other for a while, obviously because of lockdown and we'd have the odd, I don't know why we never phone each other, do we? But, <laughs> but, <laughs> That's but, true. but we talk, but we don't ever phone each other, but we talk for hours online on podcasts. So yep. personally, I've listened to podcasts for quite a few years now. I've wanted to do one for a while, but I was, I actually wanted to do one with the kids, but they're far too cool to spend time with their old dad. Yep. And I think at Christmas, Robin said to me, do you fancy doing a podcast? And I was like, Oh Yeah. And that was it. And then we're off, aren't we? We're just doing just for, for fun, really. Yeah. Well, that's actually one yeah, of the well, questions. You... Oh, sorry, sorry, Robin. Yeah, I was going to say the the origin. I, I think we were we were together once, and I think Martin, it was your your wife that had sort of said, "You just sound like a podcast." <laughs> when we just <laughs> yeah. sitting there, we we're just taking in turns to to it said, just sound like a podcast, and I think we we're just like, "Well, yeah, maybe we maybe we should do." Then, yeah, I think maybe maybe I've just locked down. It just gave me that gave us that little push just to think. Well, we're just going to talk in depth about film and TV anyway. It's worth just recording and just seeing if you know <laughs> anyone cares. See, yeah, see what happens. Yeah, see if anyone likes it. Yep. Yeah. Oh, and, and you've just answered uh, a couple of my questions actually. In terms of, uh, I always ask. Uh, people that come on, what was that aha moment? What was that moment that prompted you to actually start the podcast? But obviously, you know, the relationship you had uh, as sort of relatives uh, over that time and the mutual interest of mus- of, of movies and cinema and, and TV and things like that is, uh, you know, you thought, well, we, we talk about it all the time anyway. Why don't we turn it into we a do, podcast? Don't we? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was, was our first episode on, on now? Was it? It wasn't Tanner, was it? It was uh, Wonder Woman. Yes. Oh, uh, right, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so I think that's the other thing with the timing, didn't it? It took like a, a big comic booky type movie for us both to think, um, wanting to know the other person's opinion on it. Well, what did you think of that? And seeing if you got, you know, strong opinions. I had a fairly strong opinions about it. And so we, I think yeah, that, that was good timing as well, like, if there was been nothing really out at the time, I think we might have thought, oh, what are we going to talk about? Because I think that re- yeah. that just come out, so it was, yeah. that, that helped as well. Well, during the pandemic, I, think, I don't think there was yeah. a lot to talk about because obviously all the movies had stopped uh, being released. Yeah. So I guess, yeah, it's it's one of those things. But I thought it might have been because you were really upset with the quality of Wonder Woman. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, part part of it was that I was I wasn't overly I was very disappointed with it. So I, again, I, you you want to vent? To honest, if there's some, if something you, when you're disappointed and you, you you want to vent about it, yeah, and you want to get it off your chest and tell someone else like this isn't good enough. Yeah, how dare they make this film that's not good enough for me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've waited for this film. How dare you do this to me? But then equally, you know, when something's really good and you want to share that with someone, don't you? Yes. Because, yeah. yeah, I thought it was one. You want to share it if they love it. If they've not seen it, you want to share your love of it to them to try and get them infused to watch it. So either way, the, the worst ones are the, the films that just make you go, meh. Yeah. With, I mean, because Robbie, there's nothing to say. Is it all right? Yeah, it's all right. Well, so that, there's nothing to say then, is it? You want the ones that you really love or you really hate, I suppose. I mean, Robbie, you put me onto the servant. Sorry, not the, the just servant. I keep calling it the servant. servant. Yeah. And, and I was like, yeah, okay, but I don't want to get too too fancy here. But normally, Robin. So, Darren, I don't know if you've ever mentioned this before, but my take on life is Robin hates everything, and I love everything. Yes, I have. <laughs> so we meet in the middle normally. <laughs> uh, but normally, Robin, if Robin says something's good, I'm like, okay, let, you know, it's it's quite critical. It I find, so let's, let's have a go. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. They, uh, Servant was fantastic. Really good show. I'm liking it a lot. Oh, that's good. I ha- I did listen to that episode where he re- recommended that, and I haven't seen that as such. So it's very yeah. odd, very creepy. Yeah, yeah, a bit like dark or something like that. Or 
the series well, dark? Well, I haven't or? watched dark actually. Okay. Yeah, I need to watch that. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll I'll, I'll check Servant out as well. So it, it sounds good from what I heard on your podcast. Yeah. So. It's easy half an hour episodes as well, so that's quite easy to get through. Oh, Although lovely. quite easy to binge as well. Yeah. So, mm. so yeah. <laughs> so look, we know a lot about you already, but uh, why don't you give us a little bit more in depth idea of who Robin and Martin are? So Can I start? start? Yeah, go for it. Well, you don't want the you don't want the CV, the live story or anything. Yeah, so no, that's that's what, right. I, I I suppose we used to talk a lot, yeah, a lot about comics. I mean, years ago, I used to actually yeah, sort of work yeah. in, a, in a comic shop. So I was, you know, my my sort of day job was comics. I was living and breathing them. So okay, and we used to sell a lot of film merchandise and things like that. So it was this beautiful sort of crossover: your hobby and your job. So you just yeah. you're, you're just living film and TV and whatever's collectible and geeky. And it was those sort of times when like Lord of the Rings came out as well into it. Um, and I think it's yeah. I, I, I think that probably got me more, you know, I've always liked films, but I think when I used to work at the comic shop, you, you're talking to customers about it all the time. I think that's where you started getting a little bit more critical and obsessive mm. about things. Um, life, uh, life wise, I mean, uh, we couldn't be more different actually because I'm a primary school teacher. Primary being, I don't know what do they, what do they have, do you have primary? Yeah. Or, I'm not sure what it's called, infants or whatever they call it in Australia or something. I'm not sure what they call it. Yeah, we have but, grade prep to I, grade I, six and that's, that's called so, primary. So I I sort of teach eight to nine year old children yeah. as as my day job. Okay. Um, but um, they'd appreciate it. Really, you know. Sorry, I was just going to say they'd appreciate a teacher that's into comic books and Marvel and DC <laughs> and everything like that. So okay, occasionally they'll, they'll come out with something because some, they they don't think you have a life outside of school. If they ever oh, see no. you like in a supermarket, they're like, <gasps> "What are you doing here? <laughs> you eat yeah, food." You, <laughs> yeah, you exist outside of the classroom. So yeah, something does come up sometimes, and that, and they'll, and they'll try to be all clever about something comic booky or yeah. something like that, or a Marvel movie or something like that. They they're they're surprised to start with when you sort of say, yeah, yeah, it's good. It's not as good as this comic or not as good that character, and they're a little bit surprised by that sort of thing, really. That you 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 know a lot about. So, same with computer game. They'll mention the computer oh, yeah. game. Yeah, they'll, they'll, say, they'll you know they'll mention something about I don't know, Fortnite or something like that, and I go, oh yeah, yeah, I'm on level seventy of that. Like, you play Fortnite? And you're like, I'm, yeah, I'll play, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I play. I play. I can play computer games. What else do you play? Yeah, they, yeah. They find that a bit strange. The novelty wears off very, very quick. Yeah. But, in, <laughs> but in, initially, it's like, oh, you're into that sort of thing. So it's it's nice. It keeps it keeps your film tastes family orientated, even when your own kids are getting older as well. Of course, because yeah, you yeah. sort of you, you you know what they're into, and you kind of. It, if they're talking about something, you sort of, oh, well, I'd be interested to see that. They're a nice sort of age where it's uh, any younger. If I was teaching little tiny ones, you know, TV shows, Paw Patrol or whatnot, whatever they <laughs> oh, watch no. nowadays wouldn't, wouldn't be of interest. Yeah. But eight, yeah. nine-year-olds, yeah, they're, they're into Marvel movies and stuff like that, you know, yep. sci-fi things and lots bits of Star Wars and stuff. Yep, very good, very good. Well, wow. so for me... I mean, it's a similar but difference. I mean, I'm a what third generation geek, so my <laughs> my mum is a real Star Trek geek fan. My grandfather was into Star Trek, Battlestar Galactica, uh, Babylon Five, all of that sort of stuff. Oh, uh, so it was it was only natural that I was going to. Uh, we'd, we'd go over and he'd say, "Oh no, I can't talk at the moment. I'm just watching, you know, Deep Space Nine or, or whatever it was, you know, back yep. in the day." <clears throat> Excuse me, and. Uh, so I was brought up on a diet of, of geekishness. Uh, yeah, grow, grown up. And as I say, Robin's wife is my cousin. And I always say everybody in our family, you're either a geek or you're married to a geek. So, <laughs> so my, my, my cousin's married to a geek. So, Perfect. yeah, I, I mean, I, I remember meeting Robin and my cousin was like, oh, yeah, we were, I think we we're at a party, Robin. Do you remember this? And uh, we just chatting. I was like, "Oh my god, this guy's a geek!" <laughs> so we were just sort of hit, hit, hit it off fairly quickly. Uh, I, yeah, I work in print, printing all my life. Uh, print now, now I work in print management. I work from home anyway, so lockdown has been a kind of normal, normal for me. Uh, although lockdown has given us some time to get this podcast off the ground. I have been off work a little bit. Yep. I think if we're as busy as we normally were i've never really got it off but but yeah as i say I, i'm a i'm a regular geek I, i'm a, immersed in geek culture you know 
Doctor Who, Star Wars, Star Trek, all of those, your Babylon 5s. I'm a mad reader as well. I love books, uh, horror, sci-fi, and we've just been talking musicals on our own show, so, so we're fabulous into musicals as well. Okay. But yeah, you, you know, like a typical middle-aged geek, I suppose you'd say. Well, we'll fit in together quite well. <laughs> so, Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's funny you're talking about how, you know, you, you go into a room and you're talking to people and geeks usually find their own pretty quickly. So you, you'll you drop Absolutely. a reference to something and if they uh, someone bites on it, especially like something a little bit older, like a Babylon 5 or something like that, or a, a original Battlestar Galactica. Um, and yeah. uh, if they know about them, you're usually pretty safe. You're in safe waters, you know, that you, you, you found one of your own. So... <laughs> I mean, I think I think what really helped me was we'd go and visit Robin and, and, and his wife, and we'd go over. And Robin would be like, "Oh, have you read this?" And I go, "No, no." And I normally every time I visit, I'd go home with a massive stack of comic books. So uh, I was like, "Yes." <laughs> so that was always good. And yeah, you know, yeah. It, it, Robin working at the shop helped me know what was a good buy and what was a what was not, not to waste my money on. So that was always always very good. Yeah, because in those days when I had. For a no children and b oh, same, staff, yeah. <laughs> st- staff discount in a comic shop i mean i was yeah. I'd already like a standing order customer there but then when you're getting discount as well i was bringing like you know thick wads of comics home every, every week i was buying and buying us I, I was really really you know completely absorbed in, in the, the world of comics yeah. at the time yeah well, you never, you never give it up, there. You? <laughs> you no. never give it up. Well, that's it. Was sort of the same for me. I was naturally, I, I guess, drawn to science fiction and stuff like that. Um, I had a grandfather. I grew up with my grandparents actually, and uh, a grandfather was into science fiction as well. And he was an, a voracious reader, and I was always giving that, books. That's all you need, yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. So, and then I had an uncle who was a mad comic book collector. So I do used to get his um, uh, throwaways. <laughs> Yep. And uh, he gave me a box of all the stuff he didn't want, and uh, I've st- I've actually still got that box. So there's <laughs> there's a lot of comics in there that uh, you know all my bo- I've got three boys, and they've also sort of inherited my love of that sort of stuff as well. Or mostly my probably my oldest one, the other two probably mm. not as big into it. But um, and he's he's like yeah, as you get older and your your memory goes, uh, he's now you know remembering all the stuff that I've forgotten. So. <laughs> Uh, it'd be great Fantastic, if I could, yeah. yeah, it'd be great if I could have him here. Actually, I always say to him, I want to get you onto the podcast just to use you as my uh, my uh, my second brain for all the stuff that I forget. So, but um, yeah, I, I similar to you guys, I actually originally wanted to start this podcast with my boys. So I bought four microphones and. It didn't work out that way, so I'm doing something else. But this has been really enjoyable meeting guys like yourself and 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 also people that I would normally not not talk to. So, uh, yeah. yeah, it's I, I wouldn't normally talk to certain people, I guess, in everyday life, or, or definitely wouldn't talk to people in America and Canada and stuff like that. So, or the UK for that matter. So, it's been great to just meet and share ideas and and learn about other people's lives. So, uh, I think podcasting has been uh, a great find for a lot of people over COVID, and it's been easier for yep. people to probably start a show over COVID a lot of times. For me, it was probably the worst time, but I thought if I can start it now, then <laughs> I can start it any time and keep it rolling. So, <laughs> I must admit, and I'm sure every podcaster does this, but a, a little bit of ours was like, well, who's going to listen to us just talking films for a bit? Yeah. And then we thought, you, you know what? We're not, we're not doing it for that. We just want to have this release to talk about for, because believe it or not, I'm sure most spouses of geeks uh, i'm sure our wives are sick of being bombarded with oh my god have you seen the like star wars trailer you know <laughs> it's only so much they want to take yeah. so but me and robin we just go backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards all the time and we just thought you know what we'll record it for, record it for us and just go from there yeah and it's yeah, for, for, yeah it's not like there's any prep or anything it was just well, we'll have that conversation anyway so we just press and record to it you know yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, very good so how's the experience been so far in terms of your interaction with community and people online and, uh, you know, Instagram, Twitter, email, Facebook, all that sort of stuff? You've, you've, you've found it pretty receptive? I think so, yeah. I mean, I've, I'm have i sure all of our friends and family are just sick of us pimping it out now because we're, we're trying to do the socials all the time. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's that, I must admit, I've watched, I've watched a lot of How to Grow Your Audience 
YouTube videos. <laughs> and I must admit, all, all of them seem to have the same message. And it's number one, get a million followers on Instagram. And number two, post your, post your podcast. And I'm like, yeah, that's not what we're doing. You know, we're, we're not doing this to sell anything. We're not yeah. doing this to make a living out of it. It's just for fun. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's all about monetizing, how to, how to monetize. Yeah, it's not meant to be a job. It's meant to be a hobby. It's like, I think Robin mentioned this off air to me a little while ago. If you're into golf, you go out, you spend money on golf clubs and you spend that time. And I think it's that time, isn't it? Just to do whatever it is that you're into. If you're into reading, football, walking, golf, fishing, it's just as something, isn't it? Just just away from whatever you normally do. Yep. And in this instance, me and Robin like to talk about film and TV. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, we've tried things like um, we we stuck our things on YouTube and very low numbers on that. Listening to it, the Twitter the Twitter doesn't seem too bad, Martin. There's, there seems to be odd, odd bits coming through, don't they? Where sort of people like a comment or share something. Yeah. Instagram Instagram has a, has a little bit, yeah. But I guess these things just take time. They're just steady snowballs, aren't they? Building up, I guess. It's not like you're going to be, you know, how is it suddenly going to go to a thousand followers? Yeah, well, I, mean, what, I mean, what that means anyway, to be honest, as a podcast, anyone can just click follow or subscribe. I think the idea with podcasting is someone's actually committing the time to actually listen to you, aren't they? It's not like yeah. someone just press, pressing like, 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 follow, follow, follow. That doesn't mean anything, does it? Well, that, that's the thing. I think it takes a lot more to actually say pen or not pen, but, you know, send someone an email or write a comment rather than just pushing a like button. So if you can get that interaction in terms of someone giving you feedback, that's what I'm looking for. And, uh, and that, that sort of community building, uh, which around, you know, different subjects, whether it be nerd I, or whatever. I, I read a, uh, I read a, a report on this and they said, if you're just chasing follows or chasing likes, then it, there's no point to it unless you were trying to monetize it. And they said podcasting it for monetizing isn't anywhere near as good as YouTube. So forget it unless mm. you're getting thousands upon that. But they said, if you get so caught up in trying to get the numbers all the time, you'll drive yourself mad. You've just got to like anything, just got to relax into it and just go with it. But that, they did said, actually, they reckon podcast listeners are actually a very loyal group because yeah you're, you're giving up an hour of your time or half an hour of your time to listen to somebody mm-hmm. uh i mean i listen to a podcast and a, and a, a, a associated podcast with that they're called the hero movie podcast and that's where i started off listening okay. and they splinter off into other shows that they've got and i find once you're you become a loyal follower i suppose yeah. it's like anything like if you shop at a particular place you become a loyal shopper so yeah i think there's that but i think again I'm sure Robin agrees. I just like I just like doing it. I just like talking about it. Hopefully, other people do as well. You know, and, if, and eventually, you know, we, we may move on to doing episodes of uh, what's your favourite oh, Adam Sandler films? I don't know, but uh, <laughs> I <don't> know. <laughs> Robin hates Adam Sandler. Films. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, I think it has to organically grow, doesn't it? I mean, yeah. how have you found your 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 custom uh, customer your, your listener base? Um, most of it so far has been the interactions I've had with uh, other podcasts, probably more than yeah. I have uh, just normal listeners giving me feedback. So it's been, yeah, mainly from uh, podcasts that I follow or podcasts that I've interacted with. And I'm like you, I'm only about 11 episodes into my podcast and I, I, I split it up every second week. I do an interview show and every other week I do a review show, review and recommend show. So the, the review and recommend shows are a bit of a relief valve for me because they're, they're pretty quick and they're not as hard to do most of the time because they're, yeah. they're shorter and I've just got to get a few sound bites from a, from a show. But it's been a good way also of getting other people to find shows that I like and I think are, are worth a listen. And, and that's what I, I really wanted to do with this was I really wanted to highlight a lot of other people's work, especially stuff that I listen to. And, you know, I'm going to come back to that with you guys. I'm going to ask you what you listen to in terms of podcasts uh, eventually. But uh, outside of that, yeah, the, you know, friends and family have said, your podcast, what do you do that for? So, <laughs> you know, what, yeah, what, yeah. what are you doing that Who, for? Who wants to listen to you, yeah. Aren't you busy enough sort of thing? So Yeah. <clears throat> and I, and they, I think it's that want, especially during a lockdown, I think it's that want to create something. So whether you're into painting or artistry or music, it's that 
I think it is. It's that want to, to make something, isn't it? Mm. And whether it's great, whether it's terrible, you know, like I love singing, right? I sing with my headphones on while I'm walking around the house, walking the dog, but I'm an awful singer, <laughs> but you do it because it makes you happy. Exactly it? right. Yeah, definitely. And and that's the thing. And look, I guess, to be honest, it's a bit of a legacy too, because, you know, once I'm gone, the boys can look back and go, oh, gee, geez, Dad was a geek. So uh, <laughs> when they listen to him on the on the podcast. No, what, so. you mean is, <laughs> what you mean is I say, wow, Dad's left with this five million follower podcast with a great, <laughs> yeah, great huge empire. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a a <laughs> complete podcasting network. There you go. <laughs> no, not quite. Yeah, okay. All right. You said that's one thing. I, that's one thing I've not actually thought about. In like in like twenty years time, because it's going to be it's not going to be like it's, del- it's going to delete off or anything. No, like it's that. not going anyway. So it just we just listen, listen back to old shows and reminisce. What about yeah, what when, about when we're living in Skynet or Mad Max territory and all the servers are gone? It, and you could remember Ooh, yeah, the name of the actors. Jars. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, we we better get on to your top ten for today because otherwise we're going. This is going to be a four and a half oh, hour no, uh, sorry, episode. Yeah. <laughs> no, nah, that's all right. That's not a problem. Uh, the only thing is, I'd probably you know I'd keep talking with you. So, look, you've picked uh, an interesting topic today. So your topic is top ten movies you take with you to a deserted island or a desert island. So. Yeah. Um, interesting, and I must admit there's not too much I'm going to probably uh, argue with on your list. There was one that I hadn't seen, but I have seen since. So, anyway, we'll get into your your 10 to 7, your first choices. I've got a proviso. Oh, sorry, to yeah. talk, I've got yeah. a proviso on here. I know all your listeners are going to say, wait a minute, you've missed Citizen Kane. <laughs> you've missed... <laughs> Gone with the Kane. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This this list we've made of films that you are easily rewatchable. That make, exactly. I mean, two thousand and one's not on here, not on here, <laughs> and neither's The Shining, both yeah. of which are amazing films that we both love. But yeah, some of my some of my top ten favorite films of all time aren't on here because of that. Yes, we were thinking uh, heavy. Before. Yeah, uh, I think the, it was a fun challenge as well. The other thing that interested is instead of just making ten, we were trying to agree. Thinking if we only had ten films between us, trying to find some of the ones, and it was good when we found one that was on both of our lists because you think, oh, that's yes. a good shared one. That gives me a chance to think of another one. Yeah. But there's got to be a few on there where we just sort of said, well, Rick, I don't care what you say, that's that's my choice. You can have one of <laughs> yeah. your choices, and just try and even it out. But yeah, I mean, made this list of my favourite film director of all time, Stanley Kubrick. The guy's an absolute genius, greatest filmmaker ever. No Kubrick films on it because I just again. Am I going to want to watch 2001 Space Odyssey? Yeah. Again and again and again. I don't know. Am I going to watch Godfather? Am I going to want to watch Cinder's List on Desert Island? Nah. So there's a lot of favourite films that, yeah, bumped. You know, the the, the geek Holy Grail, Blade Runner's not on here. Mm. But, and I have watched Mm. it a million times, but it's, 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 I wouldn't say joyous. Anyway, Durham, we're, we're hijacking your show. Carry on, <laughs> sorry. Right. Well, sorry. guys, why don't you give me your number 10? We'll start from there. Wally. So number number 10, Wally. If I was, should I start us off on this one, mine? So Go for it. I, we, we, we were looking – we both like family films. I think we both appreciated what you would consider kids' family films, even before we had kids. You know, like I love The Incredibles and all the early Pixar movies. Mm-hmm. Didn't have any kids, but I love, I love, crack, I love yeah. them. And so we were trying to think, well, we, we could do with like an animated film that you'd want to watch again and again and, and again. And I think you you just thought, we've, we kept saying, what about this? What about this? What about Monsters Inc? What about this? And and Martin just said, oh, what about Wally? It's like, yeah, yeah, of course. I, I could I could forget it. I think Wally's one of those ones that gets forgotten about because it's not had sequels like Monsters Inc. and The Incredibles and yeah. Toy Story. So it's unique in that sense. And it's also not, the characters don't feel like heavily merchandised. So it's not like you see cuddlies and hoodies of them in Disney shops yep. and things like that. Yeah. But it, it's just because it's a kids what? film doesn't mean that it should only appeal appeal to kids. It's just it's just a film. It's just an animated film, and it's it's just magical. It's, it's beautiful. There's so many. There's obviously lots of messages in there about us destroying the earth. Definitely. But it's just you know, Wally and Eva falling in. I mean, falling in love with two robots. It's mm. just. It looks gorgeous. It's funny. It's joyous. It's got a good, you know, good messages, good ending in it. Yeah, yeah it's absolutely gold. It does absolutely everything. Gold. 
Yeah, it, I'm going to watch yeah. it again tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> like you said, there's a lot of messages in there for you know the sedentary life of people in terms of the technology and yep. you know all the got all the the the, uh, the people floating around on those hover beds and just enormous yep. and yeah, uh, lazy. Yeah, and uh, yeah, look, Eve I thought was fantastic character the way she sticks up for Wally and. Uh, but she's such a you know a, a nice little robot until she's not, and she's got something to protect. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah it's- I, was, I, was, I mean, it's it's the Pixar. I mean, from day one when they, the, I, I remember seeing, I must have been at school, I think, when we, we saw it, the very first short film they did with the lamps, which is obviously part of their logo. There, yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. they they can make a lamp, a table lamp, come to life. The, you know, the one with the two li- the little lamp knocking mm-hmm. the ball around. Yeah. 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 Um, and really, I mean, there's not a hell of a lot to Wally, really. He's got these sort of goggles on top of a box, and there's not a lot to Eve, really. No. But they're quite fully alive as characters, and within seconds, you don't, you're not thinking about you're watching an, an animated film. Um, it, it's, just, it's just a film, and I'm sucked in, and it's one of these films that I, 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 it's almost like I forget how much I love it. I think, oh, that's a really good yeah. film, isn't it? Yeah. But whenever I watch it, it's like, oh, my gosh, that is just... It's a ten for me out of ten, uh, which uh, uh, I'm oh, very yeah. sparing with my ten out of tens. But that one is just second up. Bill Mans is like that. That was that was a ten. Perfect. Uh, There's nothing, nothing you could fall with it. I went to cin- I went to the cinema to watch this again before we had kids, and I was just spellbound. The, I bet the, you cried big, through most of the oh, Martin, to be honest. Man, oh, he's I a big, cry. He's a big crier. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm a big yeah, big crier. That's You'll good. be lucky if we get through this episode, yeah. But yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah absolutely, <laughs> absolute, just beautiful. You yeah. know, broken down old robot and a state of the art, perfect. It's the meat, and you know, it's it, oh, and the way he's watching all the old films and he wants to dance and he tries to hold a hand, just just gorgeous, beautiful, well, yeah. beautiful. Well, that's what I think with Wally. It's it's a robot, but you yeah. fall in love with it straight away. It, yeah, it's, it's not particularly humanoid. Really. It's not like it's. Not like it's a, a box, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. One, is it? yeah, yeah. It's a box. But, all these like trundly, trundly tank wheels on the side of him. It's very, very, very good. It's all the things he does at the start, like you said, that uh, are very relatable, I guess, as a, a human in terms of watching the shows and trying yeah. to hold. You know, he's got, he's also got the little plant and all that sort of stuff, and he's, yeah, he, he's yeah. just instantly lovable, and you're rooting for him the whole movie. So fantastic, absolutely all right. fantastic. Cool. So let's go into number nine. Which is that was now, the one where you, you probably yeah. you were like <laughs> I guess Darren, you were like, uh, what, what now? Yes, I was Pop like, Star this... Never Stop Never Stopping. That's the one. And my son was like, Yeah, I know that one. He goes, Do you want to watch it? I went, Yep. <laughs> so, <laughs> so are you I'm, familiar? I'm the... Are you familiar with the Lonely Island at all? No. Watch the Jack Sparrow uh YouTube the, video. It's, this it's is where this Jack started Sparrow. with Oh. Oh really? Just Okay. Yeah. So it, it the, the the premise is Michael Bolton. Do you remember Michael yes. Bolton from back in the day? Yes, I do. He joins these guys for a song. They are doing this sort of like down and dirty R and B in the song, club, like, in a yeah. club, getting, people getting just shot. There are gangsters all that. <laughs> and then he starts. He does his own thing about singing about Jack Sparrow. <laughs> okay. It's just, I'm laughing thinking about it. Of it, it, it's a skit. The, the Lonely Island guys. Are they Saturday Night Live comedians? I don't know. But their musical skill is absolutely fantastic at, at spoofing and parodying. They, 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 do a, they do a Rihanna song on one of their albums. Okay. And I always joke to my daughter, it's more Rihanna than Rihanna. <laughs> it, it's, it's got all the beats. It's just right. And, and this is their film. Yep. It's Well, I, I, just for your listeners, it's a pop star who – rises to fame he leaves his bandmates behind and it, and it's very very much parodying the the, the justin bieber types isn't it yeah, the boy how bands. Yeah. shallow it is how silly the premise is how fickle they are very yeah, very, very yeah and he's, he's in like a band that's like a sort of a beastie boys kind of band isn't he just style then, boys yeah, yeah and then it's just justin timberlake justin bieber type because adam's uh, Sandberg's obviously quite famous for the Brooklyn Nine Nine show, mm. isn't he? That, well, that's yeah. where um, I knew him from. So yeah, yeah. And I, I think Martin has shown me this Lonely Island thing, and this, a lot of things just came together nicely with me discovering this because I think he'd shown me that, that, that and then there was that Spring Breakers one they did as well, Martin, which is brilliant. Yeah, and yeah, I think you just showed me a few little videos. And I thought they were funny. 
And some and of the lovers, fun. that's... that's oh. oh, yes, that's very good. There's loads of good ones. And I've done a few they're albums. They're not always family-friendly. Yeah. No, no, not in the least. And then getting into them on Spotify and listen to their albums. There are some songs in their, in their albums you have to skip all the time that I'm not big yeah, fans of, but yeah. some are, are brilliant. And then this film came out, and, you know, because it's just something you've just gotten into, it was like, oh, wow, they've got they've done a movie as well. I'm just getting into their albums, and they've got, and they've got this movie out. And I don't know it's anyone else has seen it. Yeah, it's not the best movie in the world. Don't get me wrong. It won't win <laughs> awards or anything, but it, it, it lives on on Spotify. I listen to it all the time, yeah. and I think that that is uh, the, the the proof of the soup is in that that it stays with you, and, and the, the film it's very very self aware, and it's got uh, Seal is in it. They've yes. got oh, yeah. who else is in it? Oh, it's there's a quite a lot of singers. Cast. Emma Stone's in it. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of um, comedy actors that you spot. Maroon, in there. F- Maroon Five are in there, yeah, Adam and Levine. they're parodying yeah the, the, the system aren't they the the, the industry oh completely very that, clever with the holographic adam levine singing with him and... oh yeah. <laughs> it's just it's just so funny not for saying, kids what, what, not for kids i don't think but the thing uh, what Ruben grew with was sort of a bit of a sort of obsession with it is because when we were getting together to see each other we were sort of we found ourselves just quoting it like a little in joke you know yes yeah. Yeah. With your mates. <laughs> so and no one's really but then your uh martin's daughter got stuck got sort of an age where she she was getting into it as well didn't she and then she was sort of yeah, absolutely reference little song lyrics and stuff it's, I, I know it's definitely not for everyone's taste and the perfect example of this is my wife went out once for one e- uh, for an evening and i was watching this and she came in and she was talking to me and i just paused it and said hang, hang on a second we just pause this and she went oh my gosh you were actually watching that voluntarily I thought that was just something on. The, I thought that was just something. I thought it was just something on telly that you were just killing time with. Uh, no. You're choosing to watch that film, and and I was like, um, yeah, and this is probably about the third time I've seen it, and yeah, I could tell. She, well, look of disgust in her face, disgust and disappointment in her face that I was choosing oh, to watch absolutely. this film. She's like, this, this looks trash. I'm like, no, well, this is. Rob- I'm, Robin, we're geeks. We used to that look of disappointment and disgust with people. Yeah. It's just, that's like the, the Lonely Island. Honestly, Darren, check out Jack Sparrow. It's I, so funny. I'm going to. Yeah. It's, and they've got Justin Timberlake on. There's a series of three songs. One's Something well, in a Box. I won't say it family friendly. Yeah, I've seen that one I'm not a big fan of. But. Yeah. yeah, but it's a series of three. One's Mother Lovers, and the other one is The Golden Rule. Again, okay. they're not for kids. But yep. they parody in that '90s R&B with, with Justin Timberlake. It, it's so funny. It's so aware of what it's parodying. Yes, very they funny. Did a, very good. They did a really mad song, which again, it's one of the ones I wouldn't want to listen to over and over again. They did one with Natalie Portman, and I think this must have come from a Saturday Night Live sketch or something. <laughs> okay. And they just talk, and and the joke was if you got if you got Natalie Portman to do a, a song. But well, she's just swearing and being like a gangster all the way through it. Yeah. And she's just, yeah, she's just blurred to get all this sort of vile language and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, it's just a bit of a one joke thing. It sort of like didn't really land in that one. I'm not, I don't think that's that funny, but I mean, oh, the Michael Bolton is, sing, the oh, Michael, Michael Bolton, Bolton singing about Jack Sparrow. Why is that funny? I don't understand. It's just, it's, yeah. it's weird. It doesn't really translate if you tell someone, but it's just, yeah, yeah I think stuff. if you're if you're old enough to know who Marco Bolton is as well, <laughs> yes, because he was really you know was was it the nineties? He was that proper crooner ballad, you know. Yeah, with his hair. What do they call it? What do they call it? Ballad rock or something or heart? Uh, heart it's like a middle of, middle of the road type. Yeah, but now, but then he's I say he's dressed as Jack Sparrow. He's dressed as Scarface. He's dressed oh. as Forrest Gump. I'm gonna and I'm gonna check this so out. Funny. Yeah, I definitely have to Darren, check this out. Yeah. Yeah. It's so funny. It's so, yeah. and you'll be singing it to yourself. And just try watching any of the Pirates of the Caribbean films again yes. without singing <laughs> Jack Sparrow. <laughs> well, I want to see the yeah, I want to see the potty mouth Princess Amadala. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. It's, 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 yeah, that's I can't remember what the song was. That bomb shake. You just type Lonely Island, Natalie Portman, you'll find it. But there's, yeah, uh, I mean, I, I, I'm not quite sure now. I, well, how old pop star never stop uh, 2016 oh, it's not that old but yeah, so, yeah the, the album's great because I think I think you know even things like little songs like the, the Mona Lisa one and the um, oh fabulous the uh, I'm trying to think of ones which don't have swearings the, in their title but it's the, the Bin Laden one the, That's the, the Bin Laden one which is like I a mean, funny little joke in the, in the film but when when you listen to the album and, and you get the full version and yeah. some of the some of the lyrics and, and it, uh, uh, 
Yeah. Very the, clever. The, the, Very clever. The, some there's yeah, some funny stuff in that. Some ridiculous stuff in some. In, when you actually listen to it a few times, you realise <laughs> what they're on about. I'll have to. Li- I'll have yeah. to listen to them because I th- I cringed a couple of times at some of the stuff they were saying. So. Um, oh yeah. 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 Well, right. there's a song there's a song about being humble isn't there a song called I'm so humble with Maroon 5 and he's talking about how humble he is yeah. that he's got a private jet but it's not as expensive as someone else's private jet <laughs> and how how he says, "Oh, I speak. I speak slowly for thick people to understand me." He's just trying. He's just talking about how, much, but he's obviously not, and he's parodying that that kind of character, that successful pop star. Really, yeah. really good. Not not everyone's cup of tea, I'm sure, but but really yeah. funny. We, we like but, it. Yeah. But, but we we picked that one because we knew us pair on a desert island. We'd have a lot of laughs for watching that together. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So we, that's why we picked that one. Yeah, ah, very which good. Which was what wasn't. What's number eight? Oh, we, this has just been cheeky. Here we go. Lord, yeah, you cheated Lord here. Of the Rings tri- you cheated Lord here. Lord of the Rings trilogy. We thought, <laughs> and if, if you were going to call us up on that, I think we'd have had to like think, oh, which one of the three will we pick then? But Martin, do you want to what, what's well, your say on Lord of the Rings trilogy? Okay, so luckily for me, so I'm a sci-fi geek and my wife is a fantasy geek. Okay. So Lord of the Rings, if you're our age, Darren, I don't know how old you are, but we're <clears throat> late 40s. <laughs> I'm, I'm older than you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, there we go then. So you, you must have grown up with Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit. It was it was very popular. I, I, I remember as I've kids. Read all the books um, actually. I read The Hobbit when yeah. I was in primary school, and then The Lord there of the Rings go. when I was early high school. There we go. So I remember Peter Jackson saying. I mean, Peter Jackson. I remember him making. Oh, what have we got? Brain dead. Bad taste. Bad taste. Me. <laughs> and you think this guy is the making feebles, Lord of the Rings? Yeah. yeah. Well, I went to the cinema, and man. I was just blown away. I mean, honestly, I was at ab- spoilers. I was absolutely destroyed at the end when Sam, who can't swim, is trying to get Frodo and stick with him on the boat. Mm. That's friendship. That's fellowship. It's just wonderful. Yeah. It's it, the, you know, the greatest story of all time brought to life and it's done right re- now the hobbit films are trash sorry <laughs> but, <laughs> but lord of the rings is just and i say we'll go for fellowship if needs to be it was such a scale and scope that we'd not seen anything like it and not as well done and i think it was when fantasy became good because there's yeah, you want, a dragon's you want, film out isn't it yeah that's you awful you wouldn't, you wouldn't have had game of thrones without without this no absolutely not they wouldn't, they wouldn't have put money into it. it um, I think what's good for uh, having a, a well-loved book adapted as well, where normally you, there's that sort of, oh, is this going to yeah. make me cringe? But it, I'm, quite, I'm kind of happy with the changes, you know, things like, I mean, you could be a purist and say, well, you know, Arwen didn't actually do that bit. And the yeah. Where's Tom Bombadil? Yeah, exactly. Tom Bombadil and all this sort of stuff. Yeah. But I don't, I don't think it, I don't think it really damages the characters. And, and again, there's little things, you know, like him uh, sliding down on surfing on the shield. And oh stuff no, like yeah. There's, th- there's things that are pandering to a more modern audience and stuff. But I felt like I'm just forgiving it all because I, I felt that there was like you could feel the love in every frame. That yeah. This guy loved this film and he was going to make it, make it well, right. He, here's the flip side of that coin. Another massive epic, Stephen King's Dark Tower series. And they tried to cram all of that into one film, didn't they? Mm. Have you yeah, seen it? it? Yeah, my son did. Shocking. Wrong. Yeah. yeah, it's shocking. But yeah, Lord of the Rings was that thing where they said, "Oh my God, fantasy can be done well," yeah. and it's great. I mean, uh, you know, that scene always makes me jump. Where is it? Old, old uh, Bilbo wants the oh, ring yeah, back. Oh yeah, goes for the ring. And, ah, and transforms. And I mean, that made me jump. Yeah, it's just really, really well done. <laughs> Really well done. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there's things like like um, like all the Hobbit houses and stuff like that. They're just things. Those things for me was just this is exactly how I've pictured it for years. Yeah. When you, yeah, and also things like uh, was it Ian Howe, the 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 artist who, who visualised a lot of the uh, paintings over the years, and they use some of his images pretty much bang on. So when you see Gandalf what entering um, the, at the at the start entering into the town and seeing him, Ian McKellen. I'm just thinking that he's Gandalf. Yeah, there was no so question. That's exactly. Oh, it. Yeah. I mean, I've got things confession. like Frodo. I, I, I didn't quite imagine Frodo like that, but I'm okay with it now. And probably in my mind, the image that I originally had in my, you know, the the book version in my head has probably faded a bit and been replaced by the movie version. Like those things tend to do that. Yeah. Mm. But, but, but with things like Gandalf was just uh, spot on for me. Saruman spot on. There's so much stuff that I just I just thought it's 
those in, those images in my mind on on the screen bang on yeah okay i've i've got a confession here so i'd read the hobbit i hadn't actually read lord of the rings because i'm i love sci-fi sci-fi horror fantasy was never really my thing that much and it, to be honest it still isn't but i will i will read a sci a, a fantasy book now and again but we went to the cinema we watched that and i, I came out and i was like what have i been missing so straight away, I went off, I read it, and I read the rest of the books in preparation for the, the films. But, it, you know, we all know the story, don't we? But it is that beautiful story of the little the little man against the world or the little person against the world. Isn't it? You, you're working man or woman against these massive forces. In fact, that's one of my favourite film tropes, okay. and it's the tiniest of things making David the biggest Goliath. of differences. Yeah. 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 Although, although they could have got the eagles just to fly them straight to Mount Doom in one go and drop it in, but you know, <laughs> those, those dumb eagles. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's timeless. The story is fantastic. I think for me, one of the most Im- impressive things that they did with t- the movies was the the costumes, especially like the elven costumes and Super things like that. They. they were fantastic, and oh, the, de- the details. Yeah, in them. crazy and. I have a and Andy uh, Circus is just. I mean, oh, that was a fir- one yeah. of the first proper CGI characters yeah. done well, wasn't it? And it was done yeah. perfect in terms Fantastic. of if you've read Fantastic. the books and you 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 understand the mentality of Gollum, yeah, what he's after all the time and how he's playing and and he, that it's came, heartbreaking, isn't it? Yeah, it look you exactly you you empathised with the or you sympathised with the character. Um, it 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 was it was a fantastic adaptation. I don't think I've seen a better adaptation of a, a book series that's so epic as well. And yeah, there are things like Tom Bombadil is a huge scene that I that was the first thing that I went, where's that? Uh, because that's a that's a really important scene in the books, and there's a lot of the lore that's actually brought out in that stay at Tom Bombadil's in terms of history and things like that. But you know, I I don't miss it. It's fine. I think Peter Jackson did an yeah. you know exemplary job with what what he had, and you know he's he's constrained by time and. Uh, what he has to present on. You can't present a yeah, six hour yeah. movie. So I think he did an unbelievably fantastic job. And, and I know these would be fine for me on a desert island because I've watched, because I've got the uh, the extended versions of these. Yeah, same. I, <laughs> I, I have to watch. Uh, so once a year, it's the extended versions and you can spread that over three nights or because each one's over two discs. You can spread yes. it over so like six, one and a half hour films if you wanted to instead. But yeah, he, um, I could, yeah. if you had to pick one. Of this, doesn't fade. If, if I, I had pick to pick one, one, fellowship. Fellowship for fellowship, you? Fellowship, fellowship. Okay. Fellowship, so, yeah. I think fellowship, I think having all the different characters all coming together, the world building works better. I like, uh, to be honest, I love Grey Gandalf. Ah, uh, yeah. I know Where it's, what is, um, I absolutely love the scene. I know it's been memed to death, <laughs> but it is that bit where Frodo says, oh, I'll take it, and Gandalf closes his eyes and say, no, you know, what have what have you got yourself into? Just just love it. Yeah. Just just brilliance. Yeah. That, um, but uh, oh, Sean Bean's death scene. <laughs> oh, oh, don't start gosh. me off. In don't which start movie? Me off. <laughs> in which what movie an that? that was? <laughs> God, he dies in everything. All his death scenes. <laughs> well, he I'd, 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 I'd seen Fellowship, and then I'd I'd, I'd gone to um, not long after I'd gone. I'd, yeah, you know, it was still in the cinema because I'd gone to America to do this little buying trip, and there was nothing really in the cinema I wanted to see. And I just thought, you know what, I'll, I'll just go and watch Fellowship again because you know, even though these films haven't come out in the UK, but of, of of them, I'd rather watch Fellowship again than any of these others. Yeah. So I went to watch Fellowship again, and it was really strange watching it in with an American audience because they're so interactive. It's like being at a British pantomime. Oh, really? People were like whooping and hollering and stuff oh, like that. No. I, I hate that. I'm glad this wasn't the first time I'd watched this film because it's in, <laughs> in our country, we're quiet through the film. Yeah, yeah. silence. Yeah. No, no phones, nothing. Silence. And, but, but it was, um, it was a, yeah, really, I just really remember it. It was a great experience watching it the second time with an audience seeing it for the first time in the cinema yeah. and then just loving it and just thinking, Oh, it's great! You're all loving it as much as I do because this is yeah. a great film. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, good memories now for then. that. Yep. So, your number seven guys, uh, what have we got on at number seven? Oh, Robo- what a Robocop. Well, Robocop. I was, um, this, this was on your list, Martin, which I was yeah. quite happy. Just like, yeah, I'll be, I'd quite happily watch that regularly. The original. Ah, oh, so the 1987 <laughs> one. Yes. Okay, yeah. I, I never want yeah. to watch the remake again. 
Yeah. Oh no, <laughs> no, it's awful. Yeah, for me, I mean, this is this is like oh, I always forget the, the director's name. Uh, Paul Verhoeven. Verhoeven. Paul Verhoeven. Yes. I mean, yes. this is yeah. this is him at his best, isn't it? It's satirical. It's dark. It's it's very violent. And I think when I was a a youngster and I got it, I, I bought, I rented it on video from Blockbuster, I think. Uh, uh, it was it was something that all my friends are talking about, and it was like, wow, this for I think at that age you're more oh. Oh, it's really violent, and that's why you want to see it because it's possibly. I mean, I was I was old enough to watch it, but you know, it's oh, it's talked about a lot. Yeah. But I think as you get older and you watch it, there's a lot of comment, social commentary in there. I mean, it it does look dated. There's lots of stop motion effects in there, but it adds more charm to it. I think it's just fantastic. It's a really, really good film. Yeah, definitely. And uh, like you said, it, the stop motion, it is what it is from the time, but you, you know, yeah. with the suspension of disbelief for most movies and stuff like that, you just disregard that and go with it. So uh, the story was, was good and the action was fantastic. And like you said, at that time with some of the, the, the scenes where the guy gets, you know, melted and then gets run over. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, pretty confronting. Yeah. <laughs> pretty see, confronting. It's, it's that. I mean, it's like uh, Total Recall is the other one, isn't it? It's, they're very, very. They're quite strong 18s, aren't they? I don't know. I can't. Do you know, I can't remember the last 18 rated film I've seen. Mm. I just don't Paul think Hogan really got away with pushing it quite a lot, didn't he? He did. But, but, the, but, but they, want that, they, want the young, they want the younger audience to sell tickets now don't they so they kind of ease yeah. things down a bit so, so they don't really want these well in America what would it be an R rating in America I don't know. yes I don't know. yeah well, mm. what do they call them NC-17s or something like that. I don't know how it works and, and it's but got a very it. quotable line in it that you know people still use nowadays so I'll buy that for a dollar yeah. absolutely so, yeah I mean so. I mean uh, over here in the UK they used Robocop for some car insurance adverts fairly <sighs> recent and I was like you're still referencing, and it was again. It was the '80s RoboCop. You're still referencing it. Yeah. But again, I watched this. I watched this fairly recently, and it does. It looks great. I mean, yeah. Uh, Peter Weller in the outfit. Yes, he's a he stiff looks great. Come. Yeah. But, but he's, it, you know, it, he's robotic, isn't he? Yeah, he's still cool when he, you know, the gun comes out the side of his leg and stuff like that. And and he seems to have a face that really sort of uh, works well when it. He's deadpan, isn't he? Yeah, it works well as a robot sort of thing. So, yeah, it's just a, a human brain and face there, but his face is, yeah, very deadpan and seems to, to work well with the whole concept. I, I remember uh, once. Oh, God. I was going to say, um, in it, there's, well, I imagine Judge Dredd. You, do you know what Judge Dredd is, Darren? Yes, both movies. Yes. So, <laughs> so, so Judge Dredd is like from a, a British comic called 2000 AD. So yes. it's like... In in the in the boom of comics, it was always nice having a British big you know big ish character yeah. mm. that's that's yeah. British and and has all this sort of satire. And really, RoboCop <laughs> is the best Judge Dredd film in a way. You yes, know, like the, you, know, you got the you got the cosmetic things like the hero keeping his mask on, but you know the way the society's depicted and that sort of uh, judge jury executioner all in the one policeman. Yes. You, you realise that actually where, Robo, Ro, Robocop does a lot of that Judge Dredd stuff in the comic. Wait, um, wait a minute. Are you, saying, are you saying it's better than Sylvester Stallone's Judge Dredd film? <laughs> With Rob Stallone. Controversial. <laughs> Controversial, I know. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, well, wow, are we? <laughs> You're going to lose some followers the, the, here, Darren. I'm a Stallone the fan, too. The one that's pretty good. <laughs> Sorry? Yeah, that film's not. What, that, Dredd? Dredd. Yeah, yeah, the uh, Carl Urban. Yeah, the, the Carl, Carl Urban. Urban one. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. I actually enjoyed that. That's good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a good movie. But Robocop is still, if you really think about it, it's kind of like that is the best Judge Dredd film in a way. Just, I mean, all like the TV adverts and stuff like that that get interspersing mm. to give yes. you like, a sense so, so. uh, of what's going on and the way they were sort of like sort of joking about some of the, like the horrible things that were going on and it was just you know here's something dreadful. <laughs> anyway, yeah. here's a, an amusing word from our sponsor. Yeah. All that stuff. There's a bit of a um, bit of a comment on relevant. society, yeah. It's yeah, awful, it's isn't it? Yeah. But unfortunately, well, what was it thirty years ago? It sort of feels like we are getting there at times, doesn't it? Well, it it I, sort of I, reminded me of Running Man in terms of what they did there, in terms of yes, the yes. same sort of thing with the show and where society was at in terms of what they'll accept and what they yearned for. Yeah, Hunger Games that. does it as well. There's quite a few yeah, things yeah, that yeah. done that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. 
I remember reading something when the film came out. Do you know Kurtwood Smith is the actor who plays Clarence Bodica, you know, the guy with glasses, yes. the main bad guy? Yes. They reckon he, he couldn't get any work after this film because he was so horrible in oh. his it took yeah, it took him quite a while to get any more acting work because <laughs> everyone hated him. I was like, isn't, wow, he hor- some- it, isn't he horrible as the dad in Dead Poets as well? Around about the same time. Yes, Dead, po- yes, Dead Poets Society. So that was it. <laughs> So those two roles, yeah, you're like, um, yeah, you're horrible, you are. Become you're, you're typecast. Horrible too well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Plus typecast. Robocop has just got some, it's quotable, you know, dead or alive, you're coming with me. It's yeah. just, drop it, you know, all of these things. It's an iconic movie. Quotable yeah. things, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. Yeah. Seconds to comply and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And, so, and e- even now, I saw something the other day, I can't remember what it, what, it, what the film was. Oh, there were, it was a, a YouTube video, they were talking about the film Chappie. And in that, they said, not Chappie, but there's another robot. And they called him Ed 209 or ED209. <laughs> so people are still referencing yeah. Robocop. Homage now. to uh, Robocop. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. Oh, very good. All right, so that's 10 to 7. So it's a pretty strong start. And uh, I think you're pretty, pretty entertained with those movies. Let's take a break. As a new podcaster, one of the annoying things I have found about trying to collect the reviews you get for your show is that Apple, for example, only show you the reviews you get in the iTunes store of the country that the review is made in. So if someone reviews my show in Canada, I won't even know they have reviewed unless they tell me. And I won't be able to see the review unless I log into that country's iTunes page. And honestly, that sounds like a lot of hard work. However, I recently signed up for a service that aggregates all of your ratings and reviews from a number of sources and displays them for you all in one place. Not only that, but they also offer a link for your podcast that automatically displays only the rating and review platforms compatible with your listener's device. So people don't have to wonder or search for how and where they can rate and review your show. Go check out mypodcastreviews.com. And I'd be grateful if you could please use my affiliate link when you join to let them know who sent you. It's in the show notes. And if you want to rate and review my show, you can go to lovethepodcast.com slash pod. Now back to the countdown. So one of the questions I've got, and you've sort of answered this already, but I was just wondering, what are you looking to get out of the podcast? Is there anything else other than just a, a conversation with a, a friend or relative? And is there any goal? I want to be an Oprah. <laughs> 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 topical, bit of Ben Helton there. Topical. Do, do you know what, Rob, Robin? If if I may, uh, I think yeah, I think mentioned this earlier. For us, it's purely about continuing what what we. If if life was normal, if lockdown was not here, we'd be doing this anyway. I mean, me and Robin see each other in person. We used to what a couple of times a month, if that. And we would have these conversations for several hours when we meet each other. So actually, it's a little bit of personal interaction. It's a way for us to geek out on things that we're interested in, talk about stuff, just a natural flow of conversation. And yeah, I'm into podcasts. I like listening to podcasts. I feel like you're engaged as an audience in, a, in social media where you can engage immediately, can't you? And when Robin asked me, I jumped at the chance because I just think, yeah, as I say, it's, it's a, a creative thing to do. And yeah, if we get 11 episodes into it and say we've had enough, then, then we, we run out of time and it was great. Yep. But goals, I, I, I'm not interested in monetizing it. However, we will accept, <laughs> we will accept pay promotion. <laughs> uh, there's no goal as such. It's just, there's, there's, there's not even numbers. There's not, we don't, I don't, we don't even have like a number in mind. You know, say, oh, we're like a target. We'll, we'll I'd love us to get to a thousand this or um, yeah. I don't know the, 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 the sort of number you don't even know what's a, what's a reasonable number anyway you just go like you know I'd, 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 I'm interested in seeing well um, Robin the, it's you know the amount of downloads in the first seven days I, I like my stats so I like looking at stuff like that and seeing how that's slowly creeping up yeah so I'm thinking, well, is this because are these new listeners then, I guess, that so that the first seven days is going up. So we get at the start of the week, a few more listeners each time. Well, I'll just keep going. That's quite nice to see if it, you know, if it keeps steadily going, then it keeps going. But, you know, I'm, I'm not I'm not thinking I'm not obsessing about, oh, what can we do um, to push it? Get, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't know what to do to push it anyway, other than <laughs> what, what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, what, what you makes enjoy more, it, time, is it, yeah. more time on social media, which I haven't got. So I just think what we do. What makes what makes what me chuckle is uh, Darren. I don't know who hosts yours, but we're with Buzzsprout, okay. and on there they, they they give you these little badges or awards. So, so it's like you've done your first episode. And you get a little a little email from them, a little badge, and then it's like you've done. You've got 10 listeners and so on and so on and so on. Yep. So you get these little ones. Well, we had one the other day. You've got 500 downloads. Well, obviously, that's just accumulative over every episode. So it could actually be, what's that, 50 listens per episode or whatever. Yeah. But I was like, whoa. And I, I think I was a bit like Borat, king of the castle, king <laughs> of the castle. Oh, we've got 500 listens. But yeah. if you click on the page, all of these awards – it goes we're like four in yeah. and there's page after page and it goes up to you've got seventy five thousand downloads and I'm like, oh. yeah. so you're like actually we've, we've barely scratched the surface of this but again i think we mentioned earlier i feel it if you try like we're not trying to beat an olympic swimming record or anything like that. if you try and just do it at your own pace because again we, we all have jobs lives there'll be some weekends we can't record holiday whatever i think if you beat yourself up too much or you beat yourself up trying to get x amount of numbers it'll take the fun away and i think the minute you lose the minute you feel like it's a chore or a job then you won't have the natural happiness that you've got of course it's all it's all yeah. relative as well because you could you could just go well well successful podcasts you know someone that might be getting a thousand downloads on their new episode but even with us hitting the 500 mark yeah, and you, and you can spin that like, all day and go, oh, yeah, well, we've done 10 episodes, so it's only 50 per episode. But you think, I know, that's 50 people that downloaded our episode, and we've only yeah. been going for, what, just over a month or something. Yeah. So I still think that's, that's 50 people. And we know from the spike on the first episode, all, all the family members that we badgered, they're not listening <laughs> yeah. to week, <laughs> Yeah, forget that. Yeah. That, yeah. that first episode was huge. And yeah. then, but after it now, you're seeing that. Hang on, these are these are, and the world map bit on on the yeah. on our provider as well, which is quite cool as well. So you look at that and you and you think, yeah, we're finding now more people in America listening to us than in the UK. Yes. So that's not family and friends. This and that, that's that's nice to know. There's people out there that are listening to us and. Because you just think, who, who'd want to listen to it? But these Americans are listening to us, so that's quite nice. It's, it's... I, uh, I, rang Robin, I rang Robin one day. I was absolutely freaking out because, you know, you you host your podcast episode. You put it on all these platforms, Stitcher, Spotify, Apple, whatever. I walked into the kitchen and I went, Alexa, play We Have Been Watching Podcast. And it played. And I was absolutely freaking <laughs> yeah, out. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I was like, oh, I'm there. It's working. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's quite yeah, it's exciting when, it, when you search yourself and we're on all these things. It, but, um, it's amazing. Yeah, it's nice. One of the things I found is, yeah, I'm not too hung up on, on listens and things like that. And as long as I'm enjoying it, I'll continue to do it. But yeah. uh, one of the things I found really rewarding and quite surreal was when i saw i had a listen from norway or russia or yes. 13 yeah. listens from france <laughs> yeah and you, th- and you think uh, how have they found me how, yeah. how what, what have they what have they searched to come yeah. across it yeah. is it is isn't it it's it's free yeah, there's places where bit, bits on the map we don't know where I don't even know yeah. where this one of these places are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's 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 great, and, and that's what I find. I, I actually that's the thing I I probably go back to and look at a lot is that world map. I like to see, you know, where the the countries are that are listening, and I'm looking for a new country. I'm looking for someone that you know Estonia or something like that that hasn't actually listened before, and all of a sudden, oh, there's there's a listen from you know South Africa or something like that, and that's I, I actually get a bit of a buzz out of that. I think that's really cool. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, for us, it was the way I got into podcasting. I was, I think I've told Robin this story, but I was driving a lot for work and I I heard about podcasts, didn't really know what it was. So I searched and I just happened to have seen, I can't remember what it was now, but I'd seen a film either at home or in the cinema and I thought, oh, I'll just see if anyone's discussing this film. And I found this podcast, liked what I heard, liked the banter of the guys, and then I started listening to their back catalogue because I was on the road such a lot. Mm. So I think that in itself sort of bumps your numbers up when you get a new person. I mean, Darren, I don't know how your searches go, but, but for us, it's we, so like we're doing one division uh, on Disney plus. 
So I imagine there are people out there searching for one division discussion or one division yes. explained or, or whatever. Yeah. And I, that's how we get found, I think. Yeah, definitely. And that's because it's pretty current and very, uh, exactly. it's very in exactly. the, the yeah. psyche at the moment of a, a lot of people, especially nerds. So, <laughs> which yeah. Is, uh, I, 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 well, I was looking at our, our data though, actually, because what was interesting is one of our weaker episodes was the one where we only talked about one division. Where in, okay. in a way we just thought this is super popular. Let's just spend the whole episode talking about one division. Okay. There's some episodes where we've actually talked about one division and a couple of other things. Yeah. So I've actually done a little bit better. One cool. where we talked about the Disney Soul movie actually that's 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 been yeah. one of our better ones and yeah so it's not for us it wasn't it we didn't really want to just be like niche just do like comic book sci-fi geeky stuff yeah so you Which know, we, want, we don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I can, uh, I can understand. Yeah, we, we don't want to talk about any, anything that's good, any, any film, really, that's of interest. It's just what's out there at the minute. Obviously, you're, you're a little bit more limited, but like, there's the, the new Disney cartoon, that Raya and the Last Dragons come out on Disney+. Plus. If we both get a chance to watch that in the next week, I'll be quite happy talking about that. Yeah, talk about yeah. anything, really. Well, I, I watched, I've just watched that series. I think it's 2015, the one called Chernobyl. Oh, man, that is a series. So it's not current. It's not. It's not relevant. It's not sci-fi. It's not comic booky, but I mean, I actually found it on IMDb because I was looking for something new to watch. Yes. And I happened across it. I'd heard the reviews and I watched it, and I was absolutely so. Now that's gone into our watch list, and hopefully at some point Robin will get to watch it, and then we can discuss. Well, that's one re- one reason probably why I actually haven't li- listened to your One Division episode because I actually haven't seen any of One Division yet. We don't have yeah. Disney Plus, yeah. so we haven't actually seen any of the episodes. And when I say we, I say I, I mean my sons and myself. So that's probably one of the reasons I didn't want to get any spoilers from the show, and I've been trying to stay away yeah. from all the social yeah. media around it around it at the moment. Whereas Chernobyl, it's been out there for a little bit longer. I think that would be something that. If you do a series on that, that would be really popular because, again, that's on my watch list. I've, I've seen the reviews. It's everyone that it's I've spoken fantastic. to is fantastic. Well, yes, it is fantastic. It's awful. It's awful. It's harrowing, but it's fantastic. Okay. You mentioned podcasts. So, what do you guys listen to in terms of podcasts? You, you mentioned one. Yeah, I, I, I got into it after Martin. So, Martin suggested. Um, this hero movie podcast and these three American guys, um, and that, they're good. I mean, that their their focus is mainly more the sort of super, superhero, more sort of cult movie type thing. But they've got a really good banter. And then I listen to there's a, uh, a really well renowned um, British film critic called Mark Kermode, and he's excellent because that's just it's not I'm not that's not the banter side of thing. It's just I want an actual. A guy, when you find a critic whose opinions you really trust, yeah, and I yeah. like that. Uh, years ago, we used to have a guy on TV called Barry Norman, and he's like a god to me. It's like you know, just God, how old are you? <laughs> uh, um, so I, I always admire these sort of film critics. It's, it's great when you find one or a film magazine. We have a magazine called Empire, yes. and it's, there's certain critics in that. Now I trust their opinion, so if they like it, I know I'm okay. And you get to know their taste, and sometimes I'll think. Oh yeah, I know you really love that, but that's the kind of thing you like. And I know based on that other film I watched before, so, so it's, um, I, I listen to his quite a lot. I was listening actually um, the other one I, li- I listened to, which I quite like, just for a few laughs. Uh, a comedian called Catherine Ryan. Uh, I quite like hers. I quite like listening to hers. That, that's that's about it. I don't, I don't listen to a lot of them really, to be honest. Okay. Yep. Fair. Yeah. I same. Same. I mean, I started off. I found a hero movie podcast. They, yeah, they've got great, great banter, really good, and they're very interactive with their audience. So you can send an email in, and it will nine times out of ten get read out, and you feel like you're connecting with them. Okay. So again, I was doing a lot of driving. So there was Hero Movie Podcast, and then one of their guys does a one called Heroes and Villains, where he takes a single character, whether it's the a hero or a villain, basically it's in the name, isn't it? But mm. and then he dissects them down to basics. But yeah, then it's these like a guys, deep dive on a comic character, yeah. he does it, yeah. And then these guys will also do a specific series. So they might do Snowpiercer, and then they'll they'll deep dive into that. They'll just follow that series. So yeah, I, I listen to a, a lot of those. There, I used to listen to a Comics Conspiracy podcast, but I've got to be honest, I haven't read a lot of comics for a long, long time, so I kind of fell off a little bit on that one. But yeah, and a, a few comedians here and there. I listen to the Jimmy Carr sometimes. I have to be in the right mood for the comedy. Uh, 
but yeah, it's like mostly hearing movie podcasts for me. And now, I know, I and now I. And now I listen to my guest list pod as well. <laughs> very kind. I don't know if I believe you, but <laughs> smooth, very smooth. I know, I know there's your, your your fellow countrymen. Is, is it called Weekly Planet that do a sort of like a? I think they're at Aussies. I think they oh, do. I um, don't know. Theirs, theirs is really popular. I listen to them once. They go, they've got like they appear in all these Apple charts, and they they're talking about Marvel movies and all this sort okay. of stuff. Listen, they're listening for tips. So I listen to them, but. Theirs is very different, not something we could ever try to emulate. Mm. It felt a little bit more like a like a Extra. show. Like, well, yeah. no, it felt, it, it felt like a sort of an entertainment show. So there was, sort of, there was oh, okay. a lot more jokes and laughs and little and things, and it, it felt like they were performing. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, yeah. and I just thought, oh, well, that that that's fine. That's a quite that's enjoyable listening to, but I did. We as was meant to be this idea of yeah we're just chatting about a film having a cup of tea and you could li- you you would just listen in on us and think and think oh yeah I'm quite like your opinions I'm interested what your opinion is so it's more it's more of a listening and us having a of a more of a, a gentle chat I suppose yeah I didn't, didn't, yeah. I didn't, I didn't want didn't want to fake it or be someone that I'm I'm not really I didn't want to perform yeah I wouldn't be able to do it anyway. Well, it's hard to keep that up if you're not naturally funny as well. If like I've got a very dry sense of humour, so I'd like to be funnier, but uh, I don't think everyone gets my humour, so I don't bother. I I think I'm hilarious, but you ask my family, see what they think. (laughs) Dad dad jokes. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Ah, very good. All right, cool. Besides listening to podcasts and making podcasts, what are your other interests, Robin? Um, the the only sort of uh, outside is you know your standard things like you know you're just spending time with your family. Uh, like I'm a teacher, so I do I do find a lot of my Sunday evenings get eaten up with doing other marking or planning and things like that. But mm. you know it comes with the job. I've got I've tried to get back into it because I did art degree years ago. Um, at Christmas I got an, um I updated my iPad finally because my other one's so old and laggy. And I got myself one of the Apple pencils that styluses. Yes, and that has been a revelation. Oh my gosh. Um, it took me a while to get used to it. The first few thick drawings I did on it were a bit, hmm, not going to share those with anyone. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm work- there's one I'm working on now. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm really proud of it. It's coming along really nice. It's just, it's just the way it, you could just think, well, well, what's the point of that? It's like so realistic. It acts like a real pencil. Why don't you just go and get a real pencil then? Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. the way, the, but the way you can, uh, change things and undo things um, and go back to a virtual so you can think, oh, I should ch- what would this look like if it actually went really dark on the eye here? Yeah. Just go really dark on the eye. Oh, it's not right to go back, 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 and then co- then you can correct it. Being able to do those corrections as experiment as you go as you as you as I'm doing a drawing. I'm not interested in doing digital painting on it on, on it really. I like drawing and uh, yes, I'm just doing this. Uh, this face that I'm, I found a, a decent image I liked. This uh, sort of picture, of this model's face, and I quite like the hair on it. And I just thought I could imagine that as a drawing anyway. Yeah. And been able to zoom in, so you know you're zooming on just the just the eye. And I'm I'm spending a bit of time on it actually. I'm I'm, I'm really getting into that. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. It makes me want to get one now. That's really cool. <laughs> yeah. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll share it with you, Marty, when I'm when I'm when I'm. Yeah, with, you know, please ha- do. Happy, ha- happy to share it, but uh, it's, it's coming along really nicely. Yeah. Uh, me, I'm I'm a I'm a gamer, mm-hmm. and I'm desperately spending all of my time chasing down a PS5. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, no I, 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 oh all. man, <laughs> you know what? I reckon I could find the lost the lost city of gold easier than get a PS5 <laughs> in the UK at the minute. <laughs> but it's what it is, isn't it? It's a first world problem. Uh, <laughs> last yeah. last last year during our first lockdown which is a bit of a weird one i took up lamp making uh it was something i wanted to do for so now i make steampunk style lamps out of copper pipe okay. and bits of gears and fancy bulbs and bits of wood and stuff and it's looks well you've got one haven't you Robert? they're good, I make, they're good yeah yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's like, really yeah uh, I'll have to show uh, Darren. I'll send you some pictures. But yeah, yeah it's so, so I might. Yeah, Dark it's, it's like sort of brass steampunk. Colors. Yeah, yeah. Bits of weird shaped bulbs and ge- gears, and I've, I've, I made one with a clutch plate at the, recently, and it looks like some sort of hadron collider. Okay. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've, I've been doing that, and it, and it's been a 
I think everyone in our family is now going, oh, God, it's my birthday soon. That idiot's going to send me a lamp again, isn't he? <laughs> so, so, but, and our house, our house looks like a plumber's merchant now with just yeah. boxes of bits of copper pipe. But you know what? It keeps me, keeps me busy. That yeah, same as, same as Robin, reading. Uh, I follow a – it's called Media Death Cults on YouTube, and they do a book – it's a book podcast – a book YouTube channel. Yes. And uh, I, I've – really got some good recommendations off there so i have really enjoyed my reading you know and watching films and tv really as well okay you know, got to got to do my research now <laughs> that's what i call it of research course. now of course yes that's line, a great line, excuse. line on the so yeah line on the sofa with a big tea and biscuits oh sorry love yeah i'm just researching the podcast. <laughs> are you, yes <laughs> are, you, are you either of you guys into the epl or anything like that no what we are failed with we saw your first first number, uh, your first question, yeah. and I'm like, we both googled we, it. <laughs> we, 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 fa- we failed the first question. I'm afraid not. <laughs> not, not, not into not into footy. I'm afraid. No, English well, not into soccer. Uh, that's that's one for the books. We're we're the typical we're the typical geeks, aren't we, Robin? We're we're not into sports, and we're into reading and okay. <laughs> comics. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, and gaming and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We haven't yeah, played really never... since fifteen, have we? No, I got I used to like basketball. Um, some went through a phase of being really into, into basketball, but um, because of lockdown and stuff, that's kind of had to stop. And I think he's lost kind of lost interest. Not sure he'll get back into it, but yeah, um, I used to quite enjoy actually watching him play basketball because I felt it was like a sport that I could actually appreciate because I'd played it mm-hmm. and and maybe sort of think, oh, I'd love to play basketball again. Or was there any way a middle aged man could play basketball again? But um, but generally, yeah. I don't, Whoa, I've got, to... Robin, I've got an idea for a film. Middle-aged men can't jump. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's probably a good, good one, actually. Good work. Good work. I, I've played in an over uh, 35s or over 40s uh, basketball league, and there's a lot of people trying to relive their past, and oh, yeah. um, they weren't that good when they were young, and they, they forget that, and then they don't, they take it very seriously sometimes when they get older, and it's like, you know, relax, guys. You know, you're not making the NBA. So, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it can be a little willing sometimes. So, God. And that's it for the first part of our very fun chat. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And don't forget to come back next week as we finish their countdown and continue to generally nerd out over all things sci fi, fantasy, Marvel, and DC. Please subscribe if you've enjoyed the show and drop me a message or a follow on Insta or Twitter if you can. I'm probably leaning towards spending more time on Insta nowadays, but I can still check the Twitter regularly. And don't forget the Gmail and Facebook page. As usual, thanks for listening, and I'll chat at you again next week.